this release greatly improves the interoperability and integration with Cinema 4D. There have been some major additions to both the scene export and the view and plan factory integration plugins. First, we'll talk about exporting scenes to native C30 file format from view standalone. The export has been rewritten from scratch and now supports not only objects, but also scene data such as cameras and animation paths. When exporting ecosystems, they are now treated like native instances inside of Cinemar 4D. So we'll look at ecosystem export a little closer. In this example, I exported a terrain with an ecosystem using the Cinema 4D export preset. In the object manager, there's an object for each geometry type and plant variation in the original ecosystem and an instance object for each instance, which replicates the original mesh. So you can still modify each instance's size, rotation and position. Next, let's look at the view integration plugin. The plugin now supports Cinema 4D R23 and it adds integration with Arnold and V-Ray render engines up to their latest versions for converting assets between View and Cinema 4D. So here's the same scene with the ecosystem from before, but this time opened natively inside Cinema. You can change how ecosystem instances are displayed in the viewport by opening the plugin options and choosing a different ecosystem display mode. For best viewport performance though, we'll leave the boxes display. So next, we want to convert the terrain with the ecosystem instances into a native Cinema 4D object, so that this object can then be rendered with either Arnold or V-Ray. First, we need to tell the View plugin for which render engine we would like to convert the objects. So let's go to the Cinema 4D render settings and set the render engine to V-Ray or Arnold. I'll go with V-Ray. Next, we need to open View's world browser. We'll right-click the terrain and choose Convert to Cinema 4D Object. In this dialog, we can now switch between the regular instance type that we saw before and between multi-instances. Multi-instances deliver the best viewport performance and have a smaller memory footprint. So let's click Convert and wait for the conversion. After the conversion is done, the terrain object with its ecosystem is set to Invisible in the View scene. We can now even close the view scene altogether and we're left with a normal Cinema 4D scene. Down here are the new materials that were created for the converted objects. We can do some cleanup and remove duplicate materials. And now all instances share the same materials. Because V-Ray was the selected render engine during conversion, the view plugin automatically generated native V-Ray materials instead of standard Cinema 4D materials. So the scene is ready to go for being rendered with V-Ray. And in the object manager, there's only one multi-instance object for each mesh in the ecosystem. This is a more lightweight solution than having hundreds of individual instance objects in the object manager. But please keep in mind that you cannot go and edit a single instance within the population anymore, as there's now just one object representing the entire clones of a single mesh. Also, the box display settings from the view plugin options was carried over to the ecosystem meshes by the use of a display tag. When converting ecosystems to Arnold, you can choose to convert them as Arnold procedurals or proxies or stand-ins as they're also known. So for each ecosystem object and population, a file is written to disk, including all of the materials, and inside of the scene you don't see the materials and the objects are only represented with boxes but they are loaded into the scene dynamically during render time. Finally, the Plan Factory plugin is now also available as a technology preview for Cinema 4D. With the plugin, you can load Plan Factory and Plan Catalog plans natively without the need for exporting them to a static mesh first. Just like the View plugin, the Plan Factory plugin also supports material creation for V-Ray and Arnold. Again, we need to choose the target render engine first before we load a plant. This time I'll go with Arnold and then let's load a plant.
In the material browser, we can now see the Arnold materials that were generated automatically for the plant. Also, the model keeps its original procedural file format in the scene and it's not just a static mesh. At any time, we can go to Edit Plant and select a different preset. Change parameters. or generate new variations by entering a different seed. Because some parameters also influence the materials of certain plant models, the materials in the material browser might be recreated when you make a change. We can keep the plant in its procedural file format and still render the scene. But if we need to edit the generated procedural mesh any further, we can also convert the plant to a static polygon object. Now that the plant has been converted, the mesh can be edited with any of Cinema 4D's polygon modeling or sculpting tools. Since the plugin is still a technology preview, you can expect to see multiple new features and improvements in the upcoming releases. And we will also add new functionality to the View plugins and to the Cinema 4D exports from View standalone. Because the plugins allow for native material creation for different render engines and they also support multi-instances, we recommend using the plugins over the export functionalities whenever possible. We hope you'll have fun with the improved integration with Cinema 4D. As always, thanks for watching and please subscribe to our channel for more tutorials.